Welcome to Good Game Spawn Point, the show for gamers by gamers. I'm Hex. And I'm Bajo. And I am Darren. Today on the show, we're going to wrestle with elemental power if we play our cards right in Skylanders Battlecast. <laughs> There's just something so fun about a good deck building game. Playing cards date back to Imperial China in the 9th century, so they have been a popular way to play for over a thousand years. Well, something that dates back even earlier to the 8th century BC is the Olympic Games. And today we're going to review Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. <laughs> Alright, Darren, it's time for you to tantalise us with some trivia. Affirmative, Barjo. Gee up your grey matter, sportlings. It's time for Darren's Challenge! <laughs> Today, I'm asking you this. Which adrenaline fueled racing game is set in the fictional city of Fairhaven? Answer at the end of the show. Mm, nice one, Darren. Okay, guys, let's see what Gaming Picks Goose has for us this week. Goose! Goose! Goosey! Hey, guys! Hey! Hey, Goose, have you ever thought about entering the Olympics? Well, I think I'm still waiting for them to include video games in the Olympics, but if they ever had a real event like Splatoon in real life, I think I'd totally get gold in that. Oh, you know, I always saw he was a discus man, you know, spinning around and throwing a metal thing with wild abandon. Oh, I don't know, Hex. Not with this gaming arm. Anyway, time to move on for my picks of the week. And first up, Microsoft have announced the end of an era, announcing that they've stopped making Xbox 360 consoles. While no more consoles will be made, they have pledged to keep the Xbox Live servers up and running to support current owners and anyone using backwards compatible games on Xbox One. Farewell, little 360. You served us well. Now, to ease that news, check out this bit of exceptional fake guitar playing from streamer UKOG Monkey. Watch as he nails 100% of the notes on Guitar Hero 3's infamously difficult song, Through the Fire and Flames, all while playing at 125% speed. That's a 3,722-note streak. Oh, my fingers hurt just looking at that. Next up, if you've been waiting for a bit of space exploring in No Man's Sky, then you might want to check out Norman's Sky. The game was made in just 48 hours as part of the game jam called Low Res Jam, which challenged developers to make games using a measly 64 by 64 resolution. The game may not look as pretty as No Man's Sky, but you can still explore space and land on planets, and it's free. And finally, my pick from you spawnlings goes to this impressive Minecraft roller coaster from 15 year old Zach. Not only is it an impressive ride, but he recorded it in a full 360 degree video, perfect for viewing in virtual reality. Oh, get the Robo Spew bucket ready, Darren. Well, those are my picks for this week, but if you've got something you'd like to share with us and the other spawnlings, then you can go here and send it in. And that's all for this week. Back to you guys in the studio. Maybe I could get good at discus if I just. Oh, oh no. Oh no, there goes my gaming arm. Thanks, Goose. T'was a time long ago when Mario and Sonic were the fiercest of rivals, and the idea of them working together would have had you laughed right out of the lounge room. Yes, and yet here we are now looking at their fifth team up, Bajo. So without further ado, let the games begin. Let the games begin! <laughs> Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games brings together 40 characters from the Mario and Sonic franchises to compete across 14 different Olympic events. These can be tackled via a Road to Rio story mode or just played individually from the main menu. Up to four players can also compete to beat each other's scores. Guys, when I think of the Summer Olympics, I think of track and field and swimming, that sort of thing. But this game reminded me that the Olympics also has football. <laughs> Golf, yeah. BMX racing, and even beach volleyball. Yeah, it's quite a variety of events. I was happy to see they also included archery and equestrian trials too. 
When you start up an event, the game informs you if you need to use the buttons or the stylus for it. But I didn't think it did a very good job of teaching you how an event works while you're playing it. Affirmative. There are few on-screen indicators to guide you through. Uh, for example, during table tennis, knowing when to swing your paddle is largely down to guesswork based on where you think the ball is landing. The result is that the gameplay feels clunky. Exactly, Darren. And there are similar frustrations with things like timing your movements and punches in the boxing. It's just so unresponsive. Or knowing when to trigger the animation to throw your javelin so you don't run over the line. I understand there needs to be some level of random skill involved so that the players don't get the same results every time, but at least come up with a system that's rewarding to master. Hmm. Well, some events do fare better than others. For instance, I enjoyed the rhythm gymnastics because it was more like a traditional music rhythm game. The game also includes what are called plus events. These are the same 14 events, but with a more wacky video game twist. I would argue that these are more fun than the realistic events. Yeah, some of them are. In the archery, you have to time your shots to hit multiple boos instead of a stationary target, which is more of a challenge. And in table tennis, where you hit the ball nets you points, so there's more strategy to it. These are all great ideas, but I still think the clunky controls are a bit of a problem, Darren. Affirmative. Yeah, I thought the golf was good, though. <laughs> With all sorts of crazy mushroom kingdom-like obstacles, it's quite fun. And the game does look pretty good. Characters are all animated really well, and I like the Road to Rio story mode, which makes good use of the Miis too. With some costume options and gear to unlock. Another feature to the game is a pocket marathon. This uses the 3DS's inbuilt pedometer to take your me through an Olympic marathon based on how many actual steps you take in the real world. If anything, it's there to encourage you to get out and move around occasionally instead of playing games on the couch all day. Yeah, which is some good advice. I mean, get enough exercise and you might want to train to compete in the Olympics for realsies. <laughs> Final thoughts, Bajo? Well, I think overall this game has more negatives than positives. There's just not enough meat to it and it's really frustrating. So I'm going to give it two out of five rubber chickens. I have to say, Bajo, I agree. I mean, the game on the whole felt quite rushed and that was disappointing. I'm giving it two and a half. I competed in the Robot Olympics once. Did you, Darren? How did you do? Uh, well, funny story. Apparently, rocket boots are against the rules in the 8,000-metre asteroid slalom. I was disqualified, but at least I finished first. Well, it kind of has to be a level playing field, Darren. Or level asteroid field. Oh, yeah. looks on their faces. Oh. Well, we better go answer some questions at the Ask Spawn Point desk. Good idea. I'm competing in the hammer throw this year. One metric ton. OK, well, first up this week, we have this one from Queen of Minions, who is in Minion City, New South Wales. Hey, guys, if you don't answer me, I will release my minions on you. I wanted to know if there is any games where you build a water park, any good games that are to do with Lego, Lastly, are there any good PC games? Thanks, guys. I hope you answer me. If you don't, I will release my minions on you. Hmm, well, your minion highness... There are two games we can think of where you can build a water park. Firstly, there's Water Park Tycoon, which, to be honest, we have never played, so it's hard to say whether that's good or not. Mm -hmm. And there's also good old Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, although you will need to make sure you get either the Platinum version or the Soaked Expansion Pack. From what we can see, though, it sounds like Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 is a better option since you get the added bonus of being able to build a full theme park with coasters as well as a water park. And we know it's a great game and it's easy for us to recommend because of that. Hmm. Uh, as for good games to do with LEGO, well, there's so many of them. Most of the LEGO games are pretty similar, but they're all well made. So we'd say go with the ones that are based off films or franchises that you enjoy. So if you like Batman, then get a LEGO Batman game. I do like Batman Hex. <laughs> as for good PC games, well, there's almost too many to even know where to start recommending them to you. I guess, obviously, some of the most popular ones we get asked about here on Good Game Spawn Point are ones like Minecraft and Terraria, they're both great. Hmm. And I think all of the games we've given perfect double fives to are on PC with 
Portal 2, Kerbal Space Program and Ori in the Blind Forest available. Not to mention other favourites like Spelunky, Braid, Bastion, Elite Dangerous, FTL, Faster Than Light, Hearthstone, City Skylines, Plants vs Zombies, the list just goes on. Mm, yes, well hopefully some of those suggestions interest you. But let's move on now to this one from Penguin Hydra, who is in Ashbury, New South Wales. <laughs> In Terraria, where do you find a lizard temple? And what is the best ore for a helmet in hard mode? Mithril or adamantite? Thank you. Also, Bajo, please make these faces. Well, Penguin Hydra, we should say that it is not easy to get to the lizard temples, but you'll find them in underground jungles. But you can only get into a jungle temple once you've defeated Plantera and got the temple key. And before you can face Plantera, you need to defeat the three mechanical bosses, the Destroyer, Skeleton Prime and the Twins. Yes, so good luck with all of that. But as for the best ore for a helmet out of Mithril or Adamantite, well, out of those two, Adamantite has a higher defence and stronger bonus stats. But let's move on to this one now from an unnamed spawn who is in Nam Bucker Heads in New South Wales. Hi guys, how do you get into the dungeon? Because when you reviewed it, it looked really awesome. I have looked on Steam but have not found it. Is it even available for PC? Please answer, I really want that game but I can't find it. Also, Darren is not a noob. In fact, he is the most awesome at robot that has ever existed. Also, everyone do this at the same time. Should we get Darren on the phone for that? Yeah. Darren, do these. Three, two, one. Oh! Wink. Wink. Like a hold. Ah! Optimize. Rockets. Thanks, Darren. You guys are too awesome for me. Thanks, mate. Well, that's simple enough to help you out with mystery spawning. It's simply a case of mistaken identity. The game you're looking for is actually called Enter the Gungeon. So it's like dungeon, but with a g instead of a d. That's quite a clever pun, because it's like dungeon, but it has guns in it. Uh, if you search for that on Steam, you should find it easily. So let's move right along to this, and it's... Oh, Bajo! Oh, Bajo, it's a double noob accusation against you! Uh, and it's from Keyboard Cat, who is in my hidden base under Bajo's bed. I have an elevator, uh, which is in New South Wales. Firstly, get out from under me bed. Secondly, stop accusing me from out from under me bed. <laughs> Greetings, GGSP, from underneath Bajo's bed. Two things. Number one... In episode 10 of this year, 2016, you answered a question for King of Squirrels saying there is no way for you to go directly up on a Minecraft rail slash in a minecart. When in fact you could use a detector rail to activate a redstone wire to make a slime block launcher. Two, you also answered a question about Portal 2's Ratman when in fact his actual name is Cave Johnson. I found this out by playing through Portal 1. There is a cave cave in the Companion Cube level in which it shows Cave's login, showing that GLaDOS used Cave as a test subject, making him Ratman. But to make two new mistakes in one episode, cat out. Ooh, well, I think we should probably get Darren on the line to judge you of these accusations of noobery, Bajo. Uh, I don't think we should worry, Hex. We shouldn't bother Darren with all this nonsense. I'm sure he's got better things to do, like making sandwiches and... Now, now, uh, these are serious accusations, and we should get a qualified noob judge to make a ruling. Fine, I, I will be vindicated. You will see. You will see the vindication, Hex. Darren. Hello. Hello, Bajo. Hi, Hello. Darren. Hello, how can I help you? Well, this spawning here says I'm a noob because I said my carts can't go straight up, but apparently they can with a slime launcher, and also because I called Ratman Ratman, which is apparently incorrect because he's actually called Cave Johnson. <gasps> Although I'm pretty sure that's not right. Mm. Well, firstly, you are right that Ratman is not Cave Johnson. Vindication! Ratman's backstory was expanded in the Portal 2 Lab Rat comic. There, he's established to be a scientist from Aperture Labs who was called Doug Ratman, and not Cave Johnson, who was the founder and CEO of Aperture Labs. So on that accusation, I find you innocent and clear of any noobishness. Vindication. Uh, yes, but the spawning says that in the original Portal, there is a Ratman room in which Cave's login details are in it. Well, that room does exist. However, that doesn't indicate that Ratman was Cave by any means. Ratman could have simply discovered Cave's login details any number of ways. Oh, vindication. Well, all right, well, that seems fair, but what about the minecart thing? Mm, well, let's review exactly what Bajo said. Video noob referee! But as far as I'm aware, there's no way to shoot a cart straight up. The best you could do is a sort of spiral up. 
Cthulhu is a sort of spiral up. Sort of spiral up. Mm -hmm. That does seem like quite damning evidence of noobishness. Do you have anything to say for yourself, Bajo? Well, to be fair, I did say as far as I'm aware. And it's been a while since I've brushed up on my Minecraft contraption, so I wasn't aware of slime launches. Well, Bajo, ignorance of being a noob is no excuse for being a noob. <laughs> Although I will say that technically, while a slime launcher can launch a minecart straight up in the air, a cart does require forward momentum to keep going. Vindication. So unless you simply want a bouncing minecart, the cart will have to travel at an angle and not straight up. So, Darren, may I ask, are you saying that I am vindicated and not a noob? Well, you are definitely partially incorrect, and thus, partially a noob. So I'm going to issue a yellow noob card. Consider that your first and final warning. One more of those, and it's the noob cup for you, mister. Oh, well, that seems harsh, but fair, Darren. <laughs> yeah, all right. Thanks, Darren. Oh, anytime. Goodbye. <laughs> Okay, well, we have time for just one more question, I think, and it's this one from uh, the king of Bajo and Hex, who is up Bajo's nose in South Australia. <laughs> Hang on, let me see. Let me show me your nose. Mm -hmm. You snorted him out? <laughs> hey, good game. It's a bit sticky up here, but here are my questions. One, on the PS3, are they going OAD all of the Minecraft updates on the PC? onto the PS3. Two, are they going to put Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare 2 on the PS3? If so, when? And if, if so, will it have the exact same everything to the Xbox and PS4? Bajo is a noob! I am watching you. If you do not answer me, the will be punishes. Do these. <laughs> King of Bajo and Hex out. say for sure what features will be put into future updates for the various versions of Minecraft, but history shows that typically the features from the PC updates find their way onto the console versions eventually. Although the PC version will likely always be a few updates ahead. Mm, yeah, they have typically always released new updates on PC first and then bring those features to the console versions. So while the console versions may one day get all the updates the PC version has right now, by then the PC version will no doubt have even more updates that the console versions will not have. Mm. But as for Garden War Warfare coming to PS3, that doesn't seem likely. I'm pretty sure it's a current gen only game and they haven't shown any signs of bringing it out on older consoles. But that's all the time we have for this week, so if you'd like to ask us something, then you can go here and send your question in. All right, back to the studio. I guess I'm gonna get a yellow. Oh, what a shame, I've lost it, Hex. What a shame. Okay, move over Hearthstone. There's a new battle card game on the block. It's Skylanders Battlecast. Okay, Battlecaster, at this point you're ready to go big. Battlecast is a trading card game from the Skylanders franchise. You can purchase a physical deck, or you can build a digital deck and play the game on a mobile device. You can even scan the physical cards into your digital deck using the Cards to Life function, similar to the way in which Skylanders figurines are digitally scanned into the adventure game. Yeah, now I love the way this works. Crashing it! Although it's a bit time consuming manually adding all the physical cards you have into the digital version. And then it's kind of like you're managing two different decks, a physical one and a digital one, which gets a bit stressful. But anyway, let's talk about how the game plays. Yes, now we're going to draw some obvious comparisons to Hearthstone because they both follow a very similar gameplay formula. You build a deck of 30 cards and each card costs a certain number of crystals in order to play it. You gain crystals each round that allow you to play more powerful cards as the game progresses. <laughs> However, there are a few key differences that set Battlecast apart. Uh, first of all, instead of choosing a single character class, you choose three Skylanders. Each Skylander has different strengths and weaknesses, and you can collect character-specific ability cards for them, too. Yeah, and this is where it started to remind me a little bit of Pokemon. 
The battle animations play out in a more 3D format, and your team of Skylanders can be tagged in and out throughout the battle as you try to make the most strategic use of their abilities while trying to keep them healed up. <sighs> Guys, I just loved this twist on the formula and the new layers of strategy it brought. Me too. It takes a while to get a feel for which combination of Skylanders work well together, Light the way. as well as which cards combine to fill out the most powerful deck. But it's great fun experimenting. There is a thorough tutorial to teach you the basics, but I'd definitely advise you to spend some time getting your skills up in the story mode before challenging other players online. This will also give you a chance to gain a better understanding of how the Skylanders play. Yes, for example, one of my favourite Skylanders, Hex, for obvious reasons, is a little bit squishy. <sighs> she doesn't have a lot of health and takes damage quickly, but Skylanders will level up and become more powerful the more you use them in a battle. And she levels up more quickly and therefore deals more damage. This forebodes well. Hex just ranked up to rank two. The characters are balanced really well. I also like that extra random element of the gems you get each round. Instead of just gaining one new crystal each turn, you get a random roll from zero to two. So you could end up with two extra crystals to spend, or none! And the number of crystals you have determines the strength of the cards you get to use that round. Yeah, and that often means you have to change plans on the fly if you think you're going to be able to play a certain card in the next round, and then you discover you don't have enough crystals to play it. We should also point out that this game does have an optional microtransaction element. Winning matches against other players or in story mode or by completing challenges will earn you in-game gold to buy new card packs. Epic. But you can also buy gold with real money. The game handled this really well, though. I happily played through story matches to earn gold to buy card packs. Plus, there are little bonuses if you load up the app daily, like a lucky spin for bonus cards and a daily card pack as well. Affirmative. That's how they keep you coming back. True, Darren, that's how they get you. But this game is hard to put down, isn't it? Yeah, well, it does have a great formula, and figuring out your playstyle and building up your deck is all part of that fun. I think, ultimately, it's a pretty great entry into the card battle genre. Ah! You know, I was starting to become a little bit bored with Hearthstone, but the kind of Hearthstone Pokemon hybrid that Battlecast offers makes this feel like something quite fresh and different. Yeah, it adds a new depth and dimension to the gameplay, doesn't it? Yeah. And I just love the way the animations of the attacks play out. Visually, it's a lot more exciting. My only wish is for a desktop version of this game. Right now it's only available on mobile devices and I don't have a tablet, so I was playing it on my phone and the screen is just a little bit small for that. What are you giving it? Well, I was expecting this to be a complete Hearthstone copycat, but Battlecast absolutely puts its own spin on things. I had a great time. Four out of five rubber chickens. Honestly, guys, I cannot stop playing this. I'm hooked. I'm giving it five out of five rubber chickens. We are almost at the end of the show, so it's time for the answer to your challenge, Darren. Affirmative. At the start of the show, I asked you this. Which adrenaline fueled racing game is set in the fictional city of Fairhaven? And the answer is... Need for Speed Most Wanted! Oh, it was such a good game. Revolutionary for its time. I miss it. Yeah, we haven't had a really good racing game in a while. But next week on the show, we are going to be going fast as we take to the skies in Star Fox Zero. Pew, 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 pew! Just remember to do a complete rotation on both the longitudinal and lateral axes. Darren, just say do a barrel roll. That is simpler. Uh, but Barjo, technically it's an aileron roll. <laughs> all right, well, until next time, may all your games be good ones. Hex out. Barjo out. Darren out. I know it is, Darren, but barrel roll is more fun. Yeah, and but, it sounds cooler. Yeah. But it's wrong. But it's cool. Don't you want to be cool? I'll have you know I'm I'm too cool for school. Oh, yeah, you're totally cool, Darren. Affirmative. You're a cool guy. I'm...